What is up guys, Wolfgang here. So today we're gonna to talk about the Samsung portable SSD, which is the T7 Shield. So let's get into it. Now I've had this drive for about a month now, and well, I wanted to make a review on it as my old hard drive was starting to run out of space and was starting to make a interesting sound. So I decided to upgrade my, my external storage for backups. And well, this is the one I chose. Now real quick, Samsung did not sponsor this video. I bought this SSD with my own money and Samsung is not monitoring what I'm saying before I upload this video. So first things first, when you open the box, you of course get the drive itself and not much else. It only comes with the drive itself and two USB cables. So talking about the design, I personally really enjoy the design on this drive. It is more of a rugged style. It has a rubbery finish on the end, on the outside, which makes it feel somewhat protected. Now you can buy the T7 Touch or the T7 Normal, and well, it's not called normal, but you know what I mean. And it does not have this rubber exterior, which makes it a lot slimmer, but I am afraid that it would get scratched and it would look pretty bad. So I decided to go for the T7 Shield. It still can get scratched, of course, but it's definitely going to be much less likely to do that and well it will keep its look much better from dings and hits against hard surfaces now as you can see here you have a usb type c cape a usb type c port and a light which is when the drive is working and well you have a lot of information down here which i'm not going to take the time to read now then let's talk about the most important part when you buy a drive this would be the transfer speeds now from the beginning, I can tell you this is not the fastest drive you can buy. There are faster drives which use NVMe storage, which is basically what goes inside your computer. Those drives can go even faster than what this drive can do. However, what I wanted was pretty much exactly what Samsung had. So I wanted something protected. I wanted something external. I wanted something monolithic in the sense that I didn't have to open it up to insert a drive, even though the modularity is pretty nice from those. I preferred something like this, especially as my backup drive, my first backup drive, let's say. Or second, I guess, now that my HDD, now that my hard drive does still work, I just prefer not to use it now. Now, as far as the transfer speeds go, you do need to be very careful with this drive. I recommend to only use the cables that come included with the drive, which it comes with too. It comes with a type C to type A cable, and a Type-C to Type-C, which is the one I mostly use as it can provide the fastest speeds. Now, just to give you some examples, if you use a USB 2 port, you would get something like 40 megabytes per second. But if you use something like a USB Gen 3, if you use something like a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 two two port, this drive can go up to 660 megabytes per second. So the difference is there. It is very large. Even with the cables, with ports, you gotta be careful with what you're using it with. In my case, I was getting 40, megabits per 40 megabytes per second while using the front Type-C port. That is a, two, a type, that is a uh, USB 2.0 port. So that was expected, even using the correct cables. When using my front Type-A port, which is a 3.0 uh, USB port, I was getting 330 megabytes per second, which is pretty decent, I can say. It's faster than my uh, Seagate drive, so that was pretty nice. However, when using my Type-C port on the back of my motherboard, which is the fastest port on my motherboard, I was getting 660 megabytes per second, which is pretty much double using the USB Type-A port on the front, which is really good. Like, we're talking about a gigabyte would transfer in less than two seconds so that is amazing comparing it to my um, seagate drive this thing would max out at around 100 megabytes per second i've seen it reach 120 but for the most part it would dip around 80 and then go back to 113 and then go back to 100 so i'd average it around 100 megabytes per second it is a very slow drive however comparing these is not necessarily a doable thing per se as this thing cost me 50 bucks and this one cost me 180 bucks now it does have twice the storage but still 
they're not exactly comparable because it depends if you want something cheaper or you want something more reliable and quicker. Now then, with this drive, like I said, you do get the two cables. They come bundled up like this one. Uh, I have already torn the other one for this cable as it's the one I use the most. But yeah, they come bundled up in two separate carton holders. And that's how you get the cables. And well, you get to use those as you want. They're thick, nice, strong cables. Um, I definitely recommend to take care of these because these are really good cables. And as well, you do also get software to update the firmware on the, on the SSD, as well as password protect the SSD. If it's something you're interested, you can do it with their software. It does seem weird to have software installed for a drive. Um, however, once you do set up the password on the drive, I can confirm that it works on other computers. You don't necessarily have to have the software for it to be password protected. So I bought this drive, which is a two terabyte drive for $180, pretty pricey, especially in comparison to a hard drive. But well, like I said, it's what I wanted. You can buy the one terabyte version for $109 or around there, which is still double my Western digital drive with the same amount of storage. But like I said, speed, um, and maybe the, even what you want the drive for is what makes the difference if this is worth it to you or not. Now, my only annoyance with this drive, aside from the price, which of course it really just depends if, if it's what you want, but is that when transferring large amounts of files, for example, when I first plugged this in and wanted to transfer all my backups from my uploaded videos to it, it does get pretty hot after a while. Now, of course, these drives are not intended for you to be holding them. It is something you can do if you're using it, like for example, transferring from a camera to it, but um, it does heat up a bit, uh, a bit more than I'd be comfortable with. I believe some of it has to do with the rubber shielding as it is an insulator, which doesn't allow heat to transfer as easily as if it were bare metal to the outside. Now, I don't think it's a big deal, especially because it only heats up maybe when you're transferring a lot of files. It's something to keep in mind. It's better not to use it in hot environments to, you know, prevent it from being damaged in the long term. And as it is a backup drive, I'd expect it to be most of the time as it is right now, unplugged and not transferring files continuously. So I don't think it's a big deal that it heats up. I think this is a great external SSD for most people. Now it is, it is a bit on the pricey side and is a bit more premium than what most people will need. And for those people, I can recommend something like this Seagate drive. Now, I don't think this is the exact drive I'd recommend. I just like the look on it. And well, it's, it's worked fine, um, but there are better drives. I can say that much. For most people, it probably is fine enough. If you want something a bit more premium, however, or maybe a lot more premium feeling, at least this would be the drive I would recommend. It is really solid. I've truly enjoyed it. I really like how it looks. It has pretty decent speeds. And well, these cables, these cables, trust me, these are amazing. They're worth at least around maybe if bought separately, they'd be maybe around 30 bucks. I'd say they're really good cables, um, especially for the transfer speeds. So do take care of those if you don't take care of the drive at least. But, um, yeah, those are my thoughts on this drive. Also, I am going to order the new microphone that I showed in the video link over here. Uh, I'm going to be ordering it soon. And with the mixer and all that, that I said, I'll give it a try. Hopefully it sounds good. If not, well, I will be returning it, but, um, yeah, if I can make it work, you'll definitely hear an improvement in audio quality. But yeah, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you want to watch more similar to this and hit the bell icon. That way you get notified when I release a new video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a great day.